Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is uh, Lots of Best Practices, Volume 2. We have Will, Ernie, Tom, Melanie, and me just talking about the best and worst of Loxo, but there is no worst. And Tom is representing in his Loxo shirt. So uh, we're going to get started with, uh, you know, who wants to open the floor to what do you want to talk about Loxo wise, you know, either best practices or issues or the you know, new updates and what happened, you know, so uh, uh, the floor is now open. Someone or otherwise I'll, I talk a lot. So if you want me to talk, I'll talk, but no, I, wants can, to answer. I can start. I, so I'm working through <clears throat> the initial setup and I've had, um, you know, I'm going through with the, um, you know, their, their customer service, uh, rep. And I guess the one item of note is they're completely redeveloping their app. Um, that's supposed to be functional. I don't know if that would help anybody or not, but I was asked initially about the app and I was told it was pretty much useless, stay away. But, yep. uh, in the future, um, you know, I guess the app is but getting completely revamped and should be functional. Not no specific date yet, but I think before the end of the year. Do you My the, only issue would be the, sorry, app, ahead, is it, the app being the the, the mobile iPhone app. app. iPhone yes. app, yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah, yeah. Uh, my issue is, what would you use it for, right? Like, so I, I appreciate it, you know, technology and whatnot, but I, I still can't think of like what would I be doing out driving to the store why would i need the app like what could i do with it or a phone number that's all I mean, you know is that it i mean is that well, you know I mean, say, like say say uh hiring manager says hey i want i want this and this can you take care of this right now or another recruiter oh yeah and yeah. then you just i gotta call this guy i don't have his number in 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 my phone so that's true that's that's a good point that's a good point yeah if you were at the grocery store and he said hey i want to talk to I want to talk to Ron Johnson, and you don't have Ron Johnson obviously saved in your phone. I don't save all my candidates in my phone. You can access yeah. them via lock, though. That's send, a good point. Send a quick text, and and sometimes isn't that also because people have not their what what is that the iPad iPad they use yeah, but the, I use Loxo on my iPad all the time and via web browser, just like I do on my computer. I mean, it works way it works just as good. I can mm -hmm. call from it. I can do everything on Loxo's website on my web browser. That I can do on my computer. Now, now, when you have that, the app and it starts working, it, it, they have these auto Android Auto that's on your now they're on your on your little TV screen in the in the car. Is you know I don't know if you've used any of that. It's, oh yeah, yeah, like with Apple sex. CarPlay or one of yeah. those. I don't, and, I don't know. I don't have an Android, but it, it might work. Yeah, and that's probably another thing in which people may want to use it for. Because that's a little touch thing you can do or whatever. That's actually not a bad idea either. Yeah, for when you're driving. Yeah, when you're driving, especially if you're going on a long trip. And uh, a lot of times when I've been on trips, I've actually, there are times I make a placement or two. And we try, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, gotta pay for the trip, right? <laughs> you, you need to go away or more. <laughs> I know, that's why I tell my wife, we gotta do this more often because it sure as heck doesn't happen when I'm at the house. <laughs> hey Will, how did you set up your um your workflow? Uh to be determined. Um Okay. So does anybody want to talk about that? Is that something that 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 you know uh, our workflow is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine levels, right? And I've seen stuff as high as eighteen and as low as six. So anybody want to comment on that? Well, let me ask Willie what I'm gonna call you Wooly Pep. Uh, Wooly Pep, what? Uh, it's Pepe. I know it's Pepe, but <laughs> like the box. <laughs> Wooly Pep. Um, I thought it was Puppy. It, 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 <laughs> it, uh, what steps have you gotten so far, or what? What do you? What do you have? Oh, oh, let me back up a little bit. How long have you been in Luxo? Uh, uh, about a month. Okay. So, and I'm not bringing anything. It's all net new, right? I'm not bringing anything over. So um, I'm in the process. I spoke to Tom previously, but I'm in the process of moving from my current position to new position, right? And um, so I'm trying to get everything set up. And, you know, I more or less wanted to see, you know, if there was anything that any of you said, hey, that's useless. Don't even worry about that. Or, you know, 
what you do, like, like he was just saying with workflow, like, you know, what do you recommend adding, I guess, you know, those types of things. And I'm more or less I'll adjust as I go. I'm not worried about it too much, but if there's something that I'm not capturing, that's def you know, not default, it would be nice to know. And so I'll, I'll tell you what my workflow is. Okay. I have a long list. Mm -hmm. First category is a long list. Yep. The second category is a short list. And I'll go through them and I'll come back in a little bit. And then I have a phone screen. And then I have a submit. Mm -hmm. And then I have an interview, an offer, a placement. And at the end, I have rejected. And the long list is when I'm searching for people. And they're like, eh, I don't know, maybe, whatever. I'll look yeah. at them later. But they look all right. But I'm not sure. They go on that list. The short list is like, I definitely need to talk to this person. Yep. Because what I found before was I had, um, I oh, it, it, you, you just put everything in a long list and I would lose the real, the real uh, hot candidates that I wanted to talk to because they were in that list. So I needed a way to separate them. And so that got me to focus on prioritizing the people and there was no way I could do that without going through extra steps mm -hmm. in the long list. And then the phone screen is just somebody I've scheduled the phone screen. And, and then once I've submitted them, I have them in there as a reminder to my, to myself to call the, um, the, the, uh, the hiring manager to find out what's going on and to know that I've submitted them in there. Mm -hmm. And then the interview, of course, it's just good. They get an interview, the offer, just to make sure we close the thing and then the placement. But then when you go into rejected, um, you're allowed to state the reason why you rejected them. Now understand when you do the reject, there's a drop down that happens. And and you can just write the reason for the rejected because it's rejected by the hiring manager, by the by the candidate, and mm -hmm. by the recruiter. But I found I used what I used to do was say uh, I'd write something and I say oh it's right here and I I I would tap it and once you tap it it becomes a permanent per, I don't know if it's permanent but it's there right <laughs> it's if like, you like, if you write something weird like he's an asshole like I did and then you click it he's an asshole is now a reason why you can reject somebody in our lock so. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you, so, you, so you can you can just write it, but you don't have to. Now the other thing within that pipeline, the other thing I use is where it says highlight, and I'll have the can, especially when they're in the short list. Mm -hmm. I'll put like I sent out a text, I sent out an email, I sent out this or that, and I'll put like the date, and then I'll write that in the highlight, mm -hmm. and 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 then. Tomorrow I'll say, you know, I called them again on, on 513, I call them on 515, I call them on 517. So I kind of have a running list right there as to what, I've, what I'm doing. And um, that's been helpful, but it's also helpful because if I were to have a, a client that wanted to know what I've done, you can do a report and you can do a report with that being included as one of your topics mm -hmm. and gives you an idea of, okay, I've been trying to get a hold of this guy and this is where we're at. Or I'll just, even a more important thing, it says he, he rejected, he rejected this, uh, this uh, position because the salary is too low and you get a number of people saying that then mm -hmm. you have an automatic list and then you go back to your, to your guy, hey, your hiring, hiring manager, or whatever, and that tell them, Hey, uh, if you look here, I got talked to five people, and you're paying eighty, and they're making a hundred already, and they're supervisors, and you want to pay eighty for a manager, so we yeah. got to talk. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. The, yeah, the um, you know, I love the fact that you can like we have, you know, short list outbound screening submitted to client, and um, waiting offer like offer pending or whatever. And then hired, right? So, because I felt like there, we needed something between submitted to client and either rejected or, or hired. You need to be somewhere in there, like, or no, I'm sorry, after client interview. So it's submitted to client, client interviewing. So once they were in client interviewing, 
Like, where do you put them after that, right? So is it an offer pending or they rejected, right? Or did they get hired? So we, we added offer pending just so we knew who was interviewing and who was actually being considered. And I changed um, long list to sourced, right? So like, like as a way to like, no, we sourced all those candidates. So I, and then short list is the ones definitely we're going to call. So like I may do a list on sales QL of, you know, 60 people that I got off of Navigator, they go into short list. Those are six people I'm going to call. But if I'm doing the thing like Ernie and I were talking about where you do lots of source, right? You know, you, you might want to, the babies you want in the long, in the long list. So you can, and so we called it sourced. That's like the only changes that we did. We added one category called um, offer pending and changed long list to sourced and changed. I don't know what it's called, but uh, you know, cause there's, we called it screening. At first we had, we were looking at doing like send them an email, called them, send them an in-mail message, right? Like, cause if you remember in the old days, contacted was one of your things but when you clicked on contacted there's this drop down like how did you contact them like what did you do did you email them send smoke signals carrier pigeon there was all these things you could pick so when they changed everything i still wanted like a i wanted a way to everyone to know like hey um we're con- trying to contact this guy and, or gal and once we contacted then they moved to screening so the way it's set up if you're in shortlist and someone calls them on the phone emails them or text them, they immediately move to outbound. Outbound's telling us that that candidate is in the process. Someone is trying to get a hold of that candidate some way. And then once that candidates get a hold of, they get moved to screening. It either gets moved to screening by triggers or the consultant, recruiter, headhunter has to move them into screening. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our process. Like, you know, shortlist are all people we're going to call. Once any type of, um, contact was initiated they moved to outbound and then once they are contacted they moved to screening i felt like that was the shortest way to do it and to, and, and in my opinion to know where each candidate was in the process right we know that if they're an outbound someone's trying to call them we know that if they're in screening they've been talked to or someone's talking to them does that make sense uh, you know do you think that's you know my you know thinking about this too hard should i leave everybody in outbound and then you know the screening okay. to me was a way just to know I think it's whatever works for you. Yeah, it's got to it's got to be something that makes sense to you. And then if you bring on other people, we just explain to them. Um, We have a similar, but ours is a little more lengthier. Um, What is yours, Tom? Our first is sourced, and that's anybody we find, whether it's in our Loxo database, Loxo AI, I mean Loxo Source, or LinkedIn, or wherever we find them. If we find somebody, we dump them into source in the job. The next step we have is applied. And that's anybody that applied for a job through our job listing page or on LinkedIn or Dice, which we use because we do IT. We dump them into applied, all right? When we dump them into applied, are they automatically go and apply if they apply for a job on the job locks of listing page? They automatically mm-hmm. get dumped to an applied. We have a trigger sequence set up where it sends them an email automatically within five minutes i have it set up you know thanks for applying for xyz job uh we'll review your resume and follow up with you in the meantime it'd be very helpful if you can please take a minute to complete this short candidate data form and i think i explained this in the previous one i'm just asking for some very quick questions you know we do IT and technical, and the majority of the candidates need sponsorship. And we don't sponsor, and majority of our clients don't. So right there is, what is your current jobs? What is your current work status? And we have it mirror our LOXO database. We have U.S. citizen, green card holder, H-1B. So when they select that, it automatically goes in and populates that field in LOXO. So we don't have to ask them. Now, I'd say probably 8 out of 10 We'll do that form. It's not a requirement, but it helps us. It asks about, you know, what's motivating them? Why are they looking? How long they've been looking? It's like four or five questions, very simple, and they usually fill it out. Nickname is a big popular field that I want our account managers and our recruiters to fill in. If they don't have a nickname, then just put it in as Ernie, okay? Because when we're doing outbound calls or we're doing outbound um uh, sequences through outreach or even a you know a mass email. I want to 
personalize it with the nickname, not their first name. My first name That's is fantastic. Thomas. Nobody calls me Thomas. If somebody calls me Thomas, more than likely they're trying to sell me something. But getting back to the workflow, as I mentioned, we have sourced, then we have applied, then we have something called in progress. And in progress means we've reached out to them either by email, text, in mail, phone, uh, through all the various different communication methods. If they respond to us, it then gets moved into what we call engaged. That means they've engaged with us through whatever communication method. Then the next step we have is an internal submittal because our recruiters submit it internally to an account manager. Then the next step is resume sent. Then we have rejected. And we have a separate category for rejected by client, a separate workflow stage because we wanted it separated so that we know when we're looking at a candidate record and they come up in the future, we can see this person was rejected by the client and we have notes in there we put in there. Why was the person rejected by the client? It may not be that they were bad, okay? Uh, it could be that maybe they um, just weren't the right fit. They didn't have all the skills. They didn't know Python or something, yeah. They didn't know Python, but we wanna have that information there so it's available to us. So when we're looking at a candidate record, we want to get a good snapshot of that person and what we've done with them in the past. If we had them tied or assigned to a job, what was the outcome of that particular job? So you do it after engaged and then submit it to the internal recruiter or internal, and then he sends it to the client. And, and then, then we had the that stage, yeah, it, that stage is resume sent. We have a resume sent stage. And then it either goes into rejected or offer extended. Like a, oh, or really? offer extended, oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because and they could be they could be rejected, Tom. Because maybe the the hiring manager says, "Hey, we have enough candidates. Uh, uh, we're not interested." Okay. Uh, or we've only you know we the position. So you on have an hold. actual. Do you have two rejected areas then? One rejected by client and one just all rejected. That's just a general rejected, and we select from the drop down, like Ernie was saying. You know, rejected okay. by account manager, rejected by candidate. Because sometimes the candidates reject it. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. So you have one specific area rejected specifically by the client. So you know that it, you know, what the client said about them, where the other right. ones are, the candidate told us to go pound sand, or uh, once I interviewed him, I found out he was a schmo or whatever, that all moves into regular right. rejected. But there's right. one specific, once you send a resume to the client, if they don't hire them, they go into a different rejected. Correct. They go into a okay, different and, and, and then we select the reason why and we put a little note in there. Yeah. But so you once the inner once your internal recruiter submits the resume, then it's all client after that, right? The client's Correct. gonna interview and decide if they're gonna hire them. Okay. No, that's no, right. that's very similar to what we do. We just don't have the we in, we have the offer pending and the everybody anybody who gets rejected just goes to rejected. But you know, and I'm not trying to we don't have a lot of client rejections. You know, oh, most of our rejections are candidate. Yeah, I mean, it, we do a pretty good job, especially with my biggest client, because I know what they hire. And it, do, it doesn't always work. I just had one rejected because he, because he completely bombed the interview, right? But, you know, it, that he was a shitty candidate that I didn't source out. It was my fault. So, you know, he just goes in and rejected. And I put, yeah, he definitely not the personality that we're looking for, right? So... I like that though because you you probably work a, a somewhat of a different niche where you reuse your candidates a lot. Like one client may reject them and you may send them elsewhere. Yeah, so that, that's that's a great I idea. Did, I did I did yeah, I did skip I did skip we do have another one that's a stage offer extended. Tom, if okay. I, that's offer extended, yeah. yeah. If I can throw out something here when when possibly if you use the highlight form cuz I'm looking at mine my my rejected list it now tells you it's rejected by candidate, rejected by recruiter. But if I look at it real quick, and if they take time to put it in the highlight, it shows, it can give you the reason why. And you can look in that little box and say, okay, that's why rejected by recruiter. And then you say, you know, decided he didn't fit the qualifications. I've never used a highlight. I know you, it sounds like you're a big proponent of it. I, I, thought, it was, I thought it was set up to, where you could put information, selling information, bullet points about your candidate when you're doing a submittal to a client and you can do it directly through LOXO. Um, I think that's what the highlight feature is where you can take a summary of your candidate for that particular job that you're submitting them for, 
and whatever selling points, bullet points you're putting in there. Isn't that the idea of what highlight is was supposed to be used for? I have no idea what I I um, use it, I what I use it for is that, but if you're talking about 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 um, what I created was a, an intake form, a phone screen form. Right. And then and then what I do is I I then save it as a PDF. And then when it comes time to submit, you know, I bring it I bring it down from the, the PDF that I've saved in, in my file, bring it down as an attachment. And I will then list uh, why I did that phone screen, like you know, uh, Johnny John the phone Johnny Johnson phone screen for a plant manager with ABC Company. Okay, so it stays in the candidate record, not the job. Yes, and then okay. and then and then when it comes time to submit, you can go to the three little dots. It'll say submit, and it'll take you to the email to submit it, and then it'll have the the options to select which of the attachments which you will have in the file in the profile of what you want to use so you could you could then attach you can then click the um, the resume and you can click you can click your phone screen and then you just have to write hey submitting Johnny Johnson for this job in this with this company and then thank you and get back to me and then you just you do you submit your candidates through Loxo or do you send them through email? I, I, you know, I submit, I submit them through Loxo. I have other recruiters that prefer to send, submit them through the Outlook. All right. One other thing too is that what I recently did was when, when I submitted them through Outlook, I want to keep everybody informed. So I always blind um, BCC them and then submitted them to my, my client my hiring manager. But now what I've decided to do was um, was was un under under the email within Loxo, you can't you can't be CCM because there is no category. There's only a CC. So I decided to CC them within Loxo. And so I'll have all of my you can be I told you you can BCC. Not, not when you're doing a submit. Oh, not that one way. Yeah, you're right. Right. We're talking about so, that. Yeah, but but okay. but here here's the here's the other one. I I, I I cc them, and show them there. And then I write a little note in the submissions that says something along the lines of, um, the in a, in addition you'll see the folks that I've submitted or the 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 others that I've I've cc'd. Uh, these are members of my team. To let you know that we're applying all of our resources to your search, and then they go, "Oh, I thought there was only one, but now there's four of you. I didn't know that." Do any of you ever share with the client uh, the the different workflow stages within Loxo for their job? I, I we don't. No. You have the ability to do I, well, it. And I, you can. I yeah. Go ahead. I kind of do when I send the uh, the first thing I send to a client is the. Um, Candidate, do we talk about that before? Like the the thing that I think I I, I apologize, Ernie. I was returning the email uh, to somebody, but one of the things I do when I do an engaged search is I send them a uh, candidate like a source sheet, right? All the people we're going to call, right? So if I get a three or five thousand dollar retainer, the first thing I do is I go to in within the job, like when we do the you know how you said you throw everybody in the sourced. Right. So I only do it the ones we're going to call. Right. So we'll, we'll throw everybody in source to we'll move everybody to, um, you know, the short list. And then once I move everybody to the short list, I do that thing that's called um, the candidate report. And right. you could pick which pipeline stages you want to show. So when I do the first submittal, I just uh, do the pipeline stage of short list. Right. And then in, in that, the, Ernie told me to use the highlight, which I'm going to start using, but I was using the setup where um, the most recent event, right, or last general note would show up, but I'm going to start just using the candidate highlight thing. Anyway, I'll put in like I'll do little notes when I'm when I'm doing my short list. Uh, has a degree, but no experience. Uh, looks good. It's five miles away. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, and then I send it to the client, and when they once they say, "Yeah, this looks great, Tom. Oh my God, you know, no one's ever done this before. We're we're they, go for it. You know, don't call these two companies because we're in the process of buying them. But other than that, go at them, right?" And then right. if they call me like week, three weeks later and say, hey, how's it going? 
I'll do all the pipeline thing. You know, here, here you go. And they can see who's in rejected, who's in the short list, you know, who, and, and all the notes that are in it, right? So I will share it that way. I have not ever given a client access to Loxo. You know how you can grant them access right, to their job? Right. I've never done that yet. Not doesn't mean I won't. I just, you know, don't know exactly how it looks. Um, I did a funny thing. Um, Ernie was talking, you know, it was you, Tom. I'm sorry. You were talking about the form, right? The nickname and all that. So I helped the buddy of mine open a restaurant in DC two weeks ago. And I ran an ad on Loxo for a cashier. And we got fucking tons of <laughs> and I don't get very many. Um, I, 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 every time I do a job, I post it on the job board. I never get people applying to jobs, like one person per job. So I don't really right. have to run into the applied stuff. But the the job I did in Chicago had some specific things that were really important to my clients. So I did the form like you did, but I did it more like, hey, after I called them on the phone, recruited them, we started talking. I said, hey, I'm going to send you something. Will you fill this out for me? And there were five questions the client wanted answered. That would make them know if this candidate was, you know, if he, if if he answered these five questions, he was absolutely one hundred percent qualified, and if he had the personality, we're hired. So it made the search really easy. Well, I did it for the cashier thing. Just like, and I remember what you said. I had the nickname, you know, what name do you want to be called? I think full name and what name do you want to be called? And they every single one filled it out. We had their email address. I asked stupid questions at the end, like if you had to go to your wardrobe and pick one color, what would you wear? Uh, do you like pineapple on your pizza? You know, and then do you know what a euro is? Because it was a Greek restaurant, and then there are other stuff, and it worked great. It, and and yeah. I and I I should have set it up the way you had it, with the automation thing, right? Like, did and you now, did you Tom? <laughs> did you map those fields to fields in Loxo so well, they auto populate? Was, well, yeah, I did. Okay, what? good. Yeah, you, whoa, 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 you, wait, 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 back up. What did you just in, say? In the form, if you're using the forms in Loxo, you create a yeah. form in Loxo. You could have it point to the field in Loxo. So when they fill wow. out, uh, I'd have to share a screen and show you how to do it. But it, you. Hey, does anybody you, mind if he shares that? That I think that's no. great information because I love but, the form. But let, let me just, before you do that, I want to yeah, say go that. Ahead. Wanna, but, Will, I want to just bring up one other thing. Um, as you're making these steps, mm -hmm. you're going to find that you can go crazy on them. <laughs> right. Oh, and can, yeah. <laughs> and you can break everything down into these little things. So your job really is going to figure out how do I how do I write this one step and that means this, this, and this to me, as opposed to putting, you know, rejected by client, rejected by candidate, rejected and having three of them. Because what I found is that it goes too dang far to the right. Yeah. And I'm going back and forth and 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 so your job will be try to condense that a little bit so that you understand it and like these guys are saying that those words mean something to you but not only that that if you have anybody else working with you that you can easily define what you're looking for and what you're trying to tell them but that takes you know some playing around with anyway tom go ahead i'm sorry yeah it's okay uh, i don't know how you turn your screen over to me tom Oh, oh, would you do you not share your screen? Well, actually, if you want, or you can just go into share. Just just use your screen and go into uh, go into forms and lock. So I'll show you how to create one or take an existing one. And I'll show you how you can there map it. There we go. So, OK, so this is the job. Yeah, hold on. Right let me here, get back the, in there. OK, so this is the job cashier food server campus GW. And um, if you look like uh, um, on this Atlanta. Uh, she filled out the, but she does, uh, she didn't fill out the form. I'm trying to one, find the right, one to go, fill out actually, the Actually, go to, go to your settings. Okay. Bottom left-hand side, go to settings and then, and then go to forms. And let's do, uh, click add to create a new one. Or it's actually take one you got there. Okay. okay. Uh, the name field, uh, the cell number. I don't know if it'll let you do it now, but click to edit. And now go to, um, where is it? We're going to do a new, a new form. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah, let's do a new form. Cause I think you have to do it for the uh, new form. All right. So let's go to, uh, uh, do the first one, and let's just type in nickname, just for the hell of it.
Okay, now go back into it and where it says text, new question text, the drop down above it, click in there and go to record, record field. And this is where nickname, if you have nickname, Oh, in no, no, Loxo, no, I see what you mean. You got it. No, you don't do it from text. Oh, you this do is it, right. awesome, you're, dude. You yeah, you're selecting here. the field that, that yeah. lines up to your fields in Loxo. Oh, that's awesome. So I get I get nickname. I get uh, location. I haven't put it on there. I deal with IT and technical people, and 100% of yeah. them don't put, most of them don't even put contact information on their resume. So, so I ask them to put their cell number and their email address. Where they, is the the place that, that to add record fields to this? Because obviously this is well. These are all the fields you have in your Loxo record, so you can add fields to your Loxo record if you don't already have them. So can you? Where do, do you do that? that? Can you, go, you go? Yeah, you would go into settings, and then you would go to um, custom settings. That they change this around so much. Go to. Uh, Maybe it's custom validations. That's validations. That can't be it because it didn't I don't have. Know. They, they've changed it around so much, Tom. Yeah. Um, where would it be? Portal. Hold on a minute. Maybe preferences. preferences? Roles. No. Sources. Statuses. I got, status. I don't, I don't Type have to go in mind to find out where they're at. Uh, no, it, it would definitely be in settings, and only an admin can do it. Um, mm. Wow. Maybe it's profile. No, not there. Hold on a minute. So what are you, what are you looking to do right now? Let me so basically, at, on the form thing, right? So we go to the form. I'm going to open a different tab. When you go to the form place, right? So if I do a new form, this thing right here, record field, right? I don't have nickname. So right. you don't want to add a field of nickname. How do I add nickname to this? Uh, I don't have, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Me, while you're looking for that, let me yeah. go on mine and see if I can yeah, figure so, out. Uh, so, so there's a way to add these to this, right? So um, when you're in the form templates right here, there has to be a way that you can add preferences, integrations, email automation, workflow setup, custom validation, data, one of these allows me to add to the like fields right i can add more fields i don't know how to do that so what if what if we ask um <laughs> yeah it's custom add. validations tom is it yeah uh wait no maybe not uh no that how do you spell field f-i-e-l-d f-i-e-l-d -E yes i have dyslexia get over it Customize job fields. How do I build a custom drop down and cause the auto fill down yeah. for required field using yeah. the candidate feature? But I, I think you're right. I think if you go into that custom validation fields, you add it. Will it add show? Candidate no. field. Yeah, I don't even see it in mine now. Uh, they changed the layout, and I'm trying to figure out where it is. But there is a way you can add fields. Um, yeah, there should be. We should be able to add, like, nickname, right? Oh, you should. There's or, a lot of things you can add to it. Uh, actually, let me go into the, the people grid itself, and here's where it might be. Let me check here. Profile, email. Settings, oh, here it is, Tom. Settings. Here it is. Here it is. Where go is to, it? Where go to, to the pe go to the people grid. Got it. And then go to the uh, little gear icon all the way over to the right, and then you customize the grid. So in there, you can put in like nickname, salary, status, job state. You can add oh, so many different and fields. Then, okay. And you mark show them to show in grid or show on profile. And once you have oh. them set up, once you have them set up. Then you can, when you're doing a form, you can map it to the field by doing that record field or whatever it's called. So that if somebody completes that and populates that, it auto populates that record, so, that that field in Loxo. So, Tom, if you're doing that form mm -hmm. and, and you're filling it out yourself. No, I'm not. They are. No, 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 no. I know that. But if you have a form set up where you're doing a phone screen, 
Yeah. Yeah. You, you could set it up and you, as you're typing you, it in. You you can. There and, is uh there's yeah. some limitations on um yeah, you can set it up as a form. Uh we have a separate form you, that we call an intake form that for some reason it will not map all of the fields in lock so I don't remember why and I haven't looked at it in months. But uh, we have another form that we call job application form. So when they apply for a job on our job locks or jobs page, which is you know tied to our website, there is this little optional section at the bottom of the, the job description where they click to apply now or apply. It asks them for additional information and we don't have anything required, but there we're asking for nickname, salary requirements, uh, work what their work status is. So if they populate that and they that gives them the drop down of work, you know, U.S. citizen, green card, whatever we have in our candidate profile, they select that it auto populates their LOXO record. Because we spent, we used to spend a lot of time going back and forth with candidates. Do you have the legal right to work? What is your work status? We spent so much time, emails and phone calls and text messages, having that. How form. do you do a drop down for immigration status on this? Oh, what you would do is let me go to mine. I'll show you. I can't show is you. Is it a hierarchy? Name. Choose behavior. It is. No, what you would do, yeah, you would set up. Uh, shoot. What does your immigration status have? say on your. Um... We, we have our field is called work status, and then we have drop downs. And the drop downs are U.S. citizen, green card holder. How uh, did you get to that? Like, if you. We look at added the... them. We added them in the. Uh, let me get to it. Hold on a minute. Go to the. Uh, Go to the custom thing again. I'm on it. You see it? And yeah, hold on a second. Let me find it. Can you look. Can yeah. you read across this for me? Yeah. What it says? Ours, yeah. Ours says work status and then hierarchy. And then we have a show on a grid, show on profile. And then we have uh, the or selector under and or behavior. Because you want to give them the option to select U.S. citizen, green card holder, and all that. Now, where do we have that? I'm trying to see where we have that behind the scenes. What do so they can select it. Wow. Where I'm would not it be sure, Tom. I'd have to go I back. Added it. Yeah. I need to ask because I like that's really good. I just added it. So there's nickname. There's birthday. Source owner group salary yeah we even have one reached. for referral source and we have just about every source that we that we can put in but that's not something a candidate selects that's something we have selected. yeah that's you know, not in things, a form but things things like are you open to relocation whatever yeah. you want to put in your whatever yeah, you want I'm, to put in there now you got to be able to map to, that that's awesome you got to yeah. map that to a field, though, if you're going to map it. But you don't have to. You can just ask the general question. Now, <laughs> where is that's going to remain I, in the form, though? But what I, I'm getting at is if you put it in the LOXO, the profile. Right. But, you, but you're doing a phone screen. And, I found it. And, and as you and if you you have it in the you have it in the screen, in the phone screen, in your form. But you could also place it somewhere else where it says, are you open to reload? And it'll give you the reload on that person right quick. And if you also put something like their salary expectations, and you could kind of see them really quick. But you have that form that you could send out to. Yeah, you could put it here, salary expectations. I, I found it, Tom, when you got a second. If you want to. Yeah, we have a on our on our candidate form, we have, are you willing to relocate? to the job location site if necessary for this position. Um, Go ahead. Make that ahead. hierarchy. Make that hierarchy. I'll show you quick. Now I'm going to do the, um, like you said, so it's immigration status? Work status. But yeah, well, yeah whatever you want to call it. Work status. Hierarchy? Yeah. And then, or, and then you just hit that little monkey wrench there. It's been so long since I've done this. Wonder why it's not letting me choose the monkey wrench. I don't know because I tried to click it first a few times. It didn't work, and then when I came back, it let it. Maybe go ahead and hit save and go back in. When I saved it, though, it's gone. Why? Yeah, it doesn't save. save it, it's not. It's not there anymore. It's not saving. Yeah. Watch. What? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's there. 
Ah, yeah, okay. here we go. So then you just write. Oh, green. so it's a green card. Yeah, and you can you can move these around. So I have ours. The first one is U.S. citizen because that's the first one. You know, ideally, I want them to be a U.S. citizen or at least a green card holder. And once you put these in, you can move them around too. You can number them. Like number one, uh, I have U.S. citizen. Number two, I have green card holder. Oh, number they don't three, want to do I that. Have... You want to do this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, green. Right. Ah, and then H1B and OPT. Right. Now, if you wanted to, to, if you wanted to make it easier for them, that you know, assuming hopefully most of your people are going to be U.S. citizens, you can make U.S. citizens show up at the top of that form by just numbering it number one, and then green card number two, and the next one number three. That's the way it will display on your form. That's the way it will display in your LOXO Canada record profiles. It's so, way, it's so pretty much. Alphabetizing them the proper way. Yeah, priority. and you know, again, I do IT technical, and probably sixty-five percent of the candidates out there need sponsorship or or visa transfer. So you know, it eliminates a lot of the candidate pool, unfortunately. So you guys a, may not have that issues. Yeah. No. So here we go. Here we go. Immigration status. So they would check. Oh, they. Oh, okay. look at that. So you can select them if you're talking to somebody and you're on the phone with them. Hey, you know, what is your work? You know, what is your work status? Well, I'm a U.S. citizen. You can do it yourself or make it a form and just map it to that field. And I can move these two down. You, and up, you, can I? You know, I can tell you the nice part about that is you would think you'd have to go into settings somewhere and you just taught us that you could do it in. Yeah. In the field. Dude, that was awesome. Right. Tom, thank you so much. When you guys oh, listen, welcome. fucking Tom, man, that's awesome. Tom, and can I you send me back. one of those? Can you send me one of those shirts? I yeah. want you, I want everyone to know that Tom works for Luxo. Yeah, I wish <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Matt. So did, you hear, Matt to... did you hear that? I, uh, you need to put me on the payroll, Matt. <laughs> send me the check. Send me yeah. the money. This goes yeah. back to the form thing, you know, whether you're doing it or you're you're training a, a recruiter. Or whatever, like, because because a recruiter, your recruiter could go into the form, right, and could, could yes. just you know go and say, you know, I don't know if you can do it, fill out form, right? So I could fill out a form on, you know, construction manager while I'm talking to this guy, right? right? And you're telling me now these will map, right? So I don't even have to fix anything. Like that's awesome that 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 these won't, but the ones before will map to him. So. You know his name's already going to be there, whatever. But the uh, ones that'll map is awesome, dude. That's yeah, friggin' I, awesome. Like I said, with nickname, I, we use it every time, and I have my template set up and email and text messages with high nickname and auto, you know, auto populates it and makes it a heck of a lot easier. You know, um, you know another another thing you put in there too that you get what? is spouse. Yeah, whatever is important you know, to you. you, you, you have to there. I wonder if marital is marital status because you know me, I don't care. I'll ask them, you know, where no, they're from and significant yeah. other. No, but every once in a while yeah. they'll give you they'll give you some information like spouse or whatever, and you can always go back and say, "Hey, how's Mary doing?" or "How's, how's John You're doing?" All you, right. You can even you can have a you can have a field called hobbies. You know. Or, it may or, not be important to you, but it may be important to the candidate. You can refer back to the next time you talk to him in six months. Hey, or, this is Ernie. Remember when we spoke last time? You told me you were a big, you know, uh, Michigan Wolverine fan, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can call it family notes. Family, whatever you want to call well, it. Well, I said family notes just in case there's something that's happening. College, daughter's graduating from college. Uh, So-and-so is sick. Mom, how is she doing or whatever? And you can just right. have it right there as you're looking. And and there's no other place to put it, but it pops up, and and right. is, and put a date on it, and just refer to it. Right on. Yeah, yeah Tom, we had that, to re Tom. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. I as mean, Tom, really, Tom, as they would say, oh, as they I would say, I got an uh, offer. What happened here? As they would say in Spanish, Tom, you are not how you look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Never, never my wife says. So whenever somebody says something like, uh, I'm not as dumb, I, dumb as I look, I go, well, how could you be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happened? Why isn't it let me save this? An error occurred, please contact support. Oh, God, so, I had one yesterday. Either way, you know how to do it. It'll happen. Right. You know, since we're, Tom, you mentioned something earlier about 
and it's getting off the forms thing, but you were talking about like skill marketing, NPCing a candidate. I'm curious, I'm sure you have hiring managers that hire different types of people or different types of skills uh, for your clients. Do you have them segregated in your in your Loxo database by uh, tags? Like this guy hires for plant engineers, this guy hires for whatever. Like I have in, in ours, we have this person, hiring manager, hiring manager for Java, hiring manager for .NET, hiring manager for Salesforce. So when we're, we're when we have a client, excuse me, we have a candidate we're going to NPC, we can go right into the company. I can either go into the company side because we've created industry fields on the company records, and we created industries, and we just populate which ones they are. So if I have a, so you did an industry that, field across here. Yeah, you just go into industry. Uh, do you even have industry? If not, you want to create an industry one. Nope. I All just right, have so go to the gear, and go to the gear icon. Talking about that. And go to the, the gear icon and create one that says uh, industry. Now, you may work in the same industries all the time, so it may not be relevant for you, but I work IT across all different industries. Okay, now there's industry. So I now what you want to do is go into industry, select a drop down. They're right here. No, no, right? no, no, not in the record. Oh, go back it. to the I'm grid. Type it. Go back to the grid. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't do the um, I didn't do the drop down. No, yeah. So there you would select and you know enter whatever yeah. industries you want. Yeah. So when you're trying to, you got an NPC and you want to market them maybe to a particular industry. This will be able to refer you back to that industry, and now you identify who the hiring manager is, and you just MPC them. I like that because what, what me and Ernie were talking about this, and I did this company type. That's how I was going to segregate it, right? You so can do it that way too. Yeah, I like, how, what, but I like that for you? way better. Yeah, I well, like that. that no, I like your way better. It's a drop down, or just go back into your settings, pay the gear icon, and change company type to industry in that field. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That's dude. That's a great. What did you just write, Ernie? See, so, yeah, I, I I was I was going to add something for Tom to use. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Write the recruiter expert a short email introducing candidate next level executive search. I like the connection. But yeah, so that's that's the stuff that you did. Where where would you use that, Ernie? Where would I use like, this? Look at, look at the note. Ernie Ernie just put something in the messages. In the chat. So you guys, look, look at that. Yeah, in the chat. Look look like see what uh, y'all think about okay. that. Now now this is for an NPC that like you were talking about. You get this. This is your prompt. And then at it says insert resume here. You'll get somebody's resume. Right. Or you get somebody's LinkedIn, and then you attach it there, and then you run it. Oh, and he's it, talking about chat GPT. Well, what I'm talking, what I'm talking about when you're talking about an NPC, to write it up and make it faster, to, instead of trying to figure it all, all out and try to write something really nice. Right. You have this to refer back to. You have this to you put well you put this in there, and then you and then you put the resume underneath. And it will produce an MPC for you, right? So just as a a quick way of getting somebody to write that for you, right? But how do you, how do you guys segregate in your database a hiring manager for a particular industry or technology or a particular area within, let's say, a manufacturing plant, or do you just sit there and go to the company record and try to figure out oh, this guy might be in? I remember, man. I'm probably a much smaller than you. So right. in my industry, I know like if I had to have, well, my biggest client, they switch, they're constantly promoting. So sometimes I'll run into not knowing who the engineering manager is or the plant manager, Right. but I pretty much know them all. So I don't really need that. I'm not that large. If I had a hundred clients, right. Or a hundred companies that I work with on and off, then that would be a good, a good idea, you know, in that sense. And as I'm trying to build, I'm trying to build another division out right now. That's probably a great idea. Like, and so how do you do that? So when, if, if I'm building out, let's say I'm building out all the HVAC uh, product manufacturers in the US, carrier, those type companies, then what is your, in your mind, what's the process to, you know, make sure the hiring managers are, are organized within say carrier or Pigeon or um, Lennox? 
that's a good question. Uh, you'd probably have a separate company record for, for each company if you're doing it that way. Uh, and then you would just add those people to the company, whatever, whoever the hiring managers are, and maybe the, the hiring manager, if there's one top hiring manager, pin them to the top of the list in that company record. So they show up first when somebody opens up that company record. Okay, that that's kind of right what top. we do. I mean, that's kind of what yeah. I do. Like, I have yeah. all my guys pin. Doesn't okay. it also? Doesn't it also when you when you fill out the job description when you're doing that, and then it asks you, and you go to advance, it'll ask yeah, you who's the hiring, hiring manager. Yeah. Right. Then you can do right. the hiring manager, and they show up. But right. I, I, it, you got to find, and, you know, and then you you could also put in who's the hiring manager, but who's your contact that you have to call there. Like sometimes they want you to go through the the, the internal recruiter, they want you to go through the to the HR person, but whoever that key person is, and then you just have the others there as kind of a a reminder as who they are, who's going to yeah, use. We, we put those instructions in the company record under uh, the culture field, just the instructions. So if somebody's out of the office and I need to send a resume to XYZ, it shows me who I need to send it to if I have to put salary information or not, because some of our clients don't want salary information because there's more than one eye, one person eyeballing it. Yeah. So we put those under the culture thing just as instructions. So, um, but segregating your database, Tom, if you're doing HVAC, you may want to just create a tag that says HVAC. And anybody that you're doing HVAC in, whether they're a candidate or a contact, you have the tag HVAC, and you just got to pull them up that way. Yeah, that's a good uh, – That I was looking at the tags, and unfortunately, my tag section has, um, let's see, uh, a ridiculous amount of tags. Oh, yeah, ours do like, too. They're like thousands. And you can like, go in an accident. Yeah, yeah, you can go in and clean them up. You know, if you have you have admin rights, you can go in and clean them up yeah. when you get a chance. I was using – what I was trying to do is whenever I imported people from SalesQL into Loxo, because of the fields, you know, they don't all match. And one of the fields I liked that SalesQL had was skills. So I put skills into tags, and that, like, like okay, so the word AutoCAD, AutoCAD Lite, AutoCAD Plus, Auto-CAD, AutoCAD X, you know, it was like 15 different AutoCADs. That were all the same just right. you know however they whatever was on their linkedin was right. a little different right so then that's where i ran into this you know ridiculous amount of tags that i've not like i said i need to clean them up and that's um and it's not tags it's actually skills sorry i think right. is, is what it is right. i don't know how many tags i have i have to look at my tags yeah i never pay attention to the skills i, I don't really pay attention yeah, I, I, find, it, I find it, the tags. It doesn't mean they have the experience. It just means it's on their resume or their profile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, it's so funny because you 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 bringing up something how we're all doing stuff differently, right? Like, so you're saying I could tag them as HVAC, where I would just put company type as HVAC and make sure they're all associated. Like, yeah, it's and then Ernie was telling me, and I never thought of this. I don't ever when I import a candidate if that client company they work for isn't a client or a potential client, I won't put them into Loxo. He puts every single company into Loxo because then, and, and it makes a good point, if it's Linux, right? I click on Linux, it'll show me all the people at Linux and all the people who used to work for Linux oh, that are yeah. in my database. And so, I, I, you know, I still haven't done it the way Ernie told me to do it, but I'm, I'm kind of like, that might be a great idea so you can see every candidate you have in your system that used to work for those companies but do we want to have i have ten thousand candidates now do we want ten thousand companies you don't have to what you can do is import them as a candidate that will not that will not create a company record no but ernie's saying create a company owner for every candidate you put in right create them so as, that a way you can as see, a contact you can see. yeah you can, you can see them you can, yeah you can do that but like we mentioned in a previous session with loxo you're going to have multiple com companies under different spellings or, you know, somebody yeah. might be Johnson and Johnson on their LinkedIn profile, but J and J on their resume. See, now you got two that, companies. And for that, oh. and for that reason, no, but, and for that reason, you merge the companies. Right. You just merge them. That's all. And, the, and then they all come into that one list. I, I want to have, I'd rather have more information available to me 
and that can decide whether I want to use it or not versus right. not having it, you know? So I agree with Ernie from that perspective. Um, I, it doesn't just, mean you're ever going to work with them, but at least you have the information in there. You can use them and, as a source. And, and especially you can, you, you see a job pop up like a VP of ops or something. And then, and then you say, okay, and, and exactly for what you were saying, Tom, if you, if you don't merge the companies together, then you have different ones and you may call it, you know, Johnson Foods, Johnson's Greater Foods and whatever, and you know it's the same company or right. they're in different locations. So then you merge them all together and then you go to that list and then you might find somebody there and say, hey, <laughs> you know, I didn't know you were a VP of Ops there now. And hey, can you- That's uh, what you made me, made me really start thinking about that is people yeah. that all of a sudden somebody in my system is working at a new company. And then, and then you just and then you just say, hey, can uh, can you introduce me to whoever? Just send them a note that I'll be calling them. And that's uh, where you want to make sure if in Sales Navigator you have them saved as an account. And then when they people are making changes, it'll let you know some somebody just moved. But or they, somebody yeah, I got that set up too. Yeah, that I got that. But it doesn't happen in Luxo, right? I mean, no, no, it doesn't happen yet. in Luxo, but you can use them simultaneously. And then you just update it through Luxo using the Chrome extension. And, and then like right, th right there, like what you have there, Tom, is yeah. show the picture. The ones not, I, well, I was going to say not that maybe, but if, if, if they're companies or if they're people and they don't have a picture, then you probably have not uh, updated them with Luxo. With LinkedIn, you mean? With, with LinkedIn, excuse yeah. me. Oh, right. yeah, like Carlos Espacina. Yeah. I probably don't have him up, up you know, like if I go to him and if we right. go into LinkedIn. And then you're going to find out then now he's got a totally different. Yeah, he's updated. But but now, now hit it. And, I wonder and, why his I wonder why his profile didn't update properly. Because sometimes when you, when you if you've done it, if you brought him in from another place before, but you've not opened up oh, and downloaded okay. it because I, I brought a lot of them in from Big Biller, and I'll see a lot of blank, you know, black black squares, blank right? And so yeah. then I'll, I'll I'll know that. There one. you go. <laughs> there so, you go. It's, it's so the then, same way bringing them in through Loxo Source. Yeah, um, it, you, you you can have issues that way. Um, yes, and the thing it, is, and the thing is, you're going to find that half the time their titles aren't even the same. Right. You know, you, you're looking oh, for a supervisor. Yeah. You're looking for a supervisor, and you're going after this guy. You download him, and you realize this guy's a director somewhere, and uh, not even caring about your production supervisor job. You know, you mentioned some of the things early on in this call that uh, some of the changes Loxo made and the colors. I like some of the things they put, like applied. When you're looking at a workflow stages of a job, oh yeah. Um, when you go, to I here. do a lot of source. I do a lot of sourcing off of LinkedIn. And I'll dump them into the source column. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that the ones that once what I call source, you guys may call long list. If there's no contact information in that person's record, it'll show you. I think it displays as contact finder or find Look, contact. Right here, fetch contact. Look right here. Fetch what does contact. it say? Fetch contact. Oh, is that what it is? Right, yeah, so, I like that. Yeah. So, and then you know, I don't know how many credits you guys have. You can set this up. To have, um, where is it? Um, auto, you know, here it is. Yeah. Anybody you put in sourced, auto fetch contact info. So, depending on how many uh, credits you guys have, you could set up one of these. One of these, like, oh, if you move to the short list, Loxo automatically looks up contact info for you. Right. So, I, I will do it for this one. Watch. So, you do auto fetch contact info, turn on. Right now it's on, and then if I drag Udon over, it's going to look for his contact info right now. Okay, but what if, it's you're auto have, what if you have? What if you found him in your Loxo database and moved in there, and then it's going to go out and find it? Going to it's going to give you the same information, maybe? No, no, it won't. It won't. Um, it won't charge you if it's a duplicate. It's a yeah, and then you if know the this, contact right? information. Like, is, you're saying it's the contact yeah. information is due. Okay, yeah. all right. Let me go to that one. Where is it? Okay, so that was that. That, that makes it? sense. Yes, yeah, so, and then you can do that. Do you guys know about this one? Hold on, let me find it. Yeah, here it is. So look, it got his email, his phone, and everything. But when right. you go into these, let's say um, he's at Harris. Uh, let me see if we can find one. Con is Yahoo. 
Like he's he, he must... Okay, so if he let's say he wasn't working at Solstice anymore, right? You, right. you come over to here. Where is it? Hit that flag. Right. And they'll give you the credit back. Yeah, you just click in and I usually type in invalid email. It yep. removes it from the person's record too. Yep. And moves yes. it from the record and gives you a gives you a and I have like Oh, I didn't know it gives you a credit back. I didn't know yeah, it gave yeah, you a look. credit back. Yeah, nice. Check this out. On my settings. Um where do you find your uh um lots of credits, right? So so I have mm -hmm. Yeah, here are my credits, right? And then what, these what here, you, these, these 80, the all these little credits here are rollovers for roll doing over. that. Rollover, right. Yeah, these will never expire. Yeah, these it helps will. you It helps you to, for the update their candidate and for their database yeah. of, of contact information. For um, what I, yeah, and, and, what, and also I found where out did, that- where did, you find Alexa, where did you find the Luxo credits? Oh, go to um, settings. Uh-huh. And then go to billing. Oh, and then okay. locks of credits. The locks of credits. Yeah. So make sure that your team is doing that because I often forget, and I try to remind the team to do that because you're, you know, you could be you're getting yourself ten and thirty credits a month extra that never roll over. I didn't. Like, yeah, no, I knew, I didn't know that it gives you a credit back if you do that. So that you should look at. You, I bet you have. Money. I bet you have a bunch of, <laughs> of credits you don't know you have. I, I, I never look at it. I no, never I, pay I attention don't, to it. Myself either. I don't look at it. I don't even matter of fact, I'll look now. I have no idea what it is. It's kind of, you know, and, you know, it, it's, I, I, got, I got scared. I got 1,204. <laughs> which yeah, means man. more than likely my people aren't using that field as much as they should be. Yeah. Now, how do, how do the credits work? Do they go, do you get some a certain every month or? Yeah, you get 200 yeah. a month, I think. I think it's 200 or 250 yeah, each. Something I like have, that. What, I had 600. I have three users. Right. Right. Yeah. I got 905, 905 credits. How many users do you have, Ernie? Four. So divide that. You probably have 100 rollover and probably got 200 for each user. They used to let you, they used to send you an email or an alert to let you know you're getting close to, if you're getting close to the end. Just I, to let you know, but I've you never, never had that was, happen. But they're, they're pretty good because I did it one time with a whole bunch of people, that, and then I, and then I did all the credits, you know, and brought it in, and and I had of course exhausted everything, and it was like the second day of the month, <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so and so I called them and I said, hey, what the heck happened? And they go, oh, you have, I, I had no idea, and then they said, oh, well, we're gonna forgive you this time and we'll give you back your credits. And you know they're pretty cool. I mean, they, they, they you talk to me, you, you tell them your problem, and what you didn't know, and nobody told me type of thing, right. and they they work with you. That they're good. Oh yeah, they gave me. They accidentally billed me by accident, and I said, "Don't worry about it. It was for a uh, something stupid." I said, "Just give me that in credits." And boom, the next day I had double that in credits. The you know, Loxo is fantastic. They mm -hmm. the, the customer service is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I you know anybody who's watching this. If you care about after you after you implement Loxo, they are still there within 15 minutes every single time. Even the stupidest questions that I ask, I get responded to within 15 minutes every yeah. single time. You, you, you know, the, the, the thing about it, too, is this. When you start talking about your database, no matter what you have, that is your car. And when we have Loxo, you have the Mercedes. You have, and, and, and you got to have one other thing. You got to have the people that are going to help you. And I've heard other ones say, you know, I have this database, but the customer service is terrible. If you don't get the relate, answer, relate. You, everybody's been bitching about that, that their customer well, service sucks. Well, if you, if you don't have that, then that means your car is broken and you ain't driving. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's why I think this one I like, because it yeah. does, and then you wake up and all of a sudden they got a new tool in there and they got a new thing in there and you're, you're like saying, damn. They're <laughs> constantly changing things. If I, I, I've asked them before, it'd be nice if they would give us a heads up beforehand, but sometimes they're just, they're just making so many changes and updating and coming out with new features and functionality that sometimes they make them generally available and then they tell us a couple of days later, oh, check out this new feature. 
Okay. You know, and, and, yeah, and that's, that's <laughs> and that's and that's why this and is that's not a bad thing. <laughs> and, okay. and and that's what's kind of weird about it because I, I like this group because you I, I wanted to come into this meeting today especially mainly because you guys are a couple of nerds on it and so am I and you find little things and you're going oh damn I didn't know you could do that <laughs> I am ecstatic of learning about the mapping field thing I, that I do. that was I that too. was worth this entire meeting man Tom thank you I mean that. And oh, what I'm going to do is, is does anybody else have any questions while I'm sharing my screen to look at before we, I stop hmm. presenting? We're fine. Okay. Okay. So um, what I was going to say is we're getting close. It's, you know, it's quarter to two. Um, I think this is a really productive meeting. We learned a lot that some of us didn't know at all. Tom, I really appreciate it. Will, I hope you got some stuff. And I, yeah. and I hope more people come. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I will absolutely – not record right if you guys don't want me to record it because you don't want to see outsiders you know like people are looking we're looking at my screen they can see my client i don't give a fuck you want to go call my clients i dare you <laughs> you know it's like i don't give a shit. they love me right so and i have no problem you know turning that off so we don't have to do that right so but i want people to ask us questions i just learned so much and i've been using loxo for eight years yeah right i, mean, I didn't know that so yeah that, that's what's really cool i mean and even on the side i tell you i'll, I'll like get on the phone and call tom and say hey What's this problem? Can we do this? And, and hey, did you work you guys through ever, stuff? Did you, you guys ever go back and refer to the like their YouTube videos? Because sometimes oh, yeah. they have some really helpful stuff. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and, right. and that's why I asked the uh, question mark too. Like you, know, a lot of times the question mark by putting in, I just didn't know what the wording was to use. You know, like right. how to right. add that, right? And but then you figured it out real quick while we're talking using the gear. And I got to keep remembering about the gear at the top right. You can do a lot with the gear at the top right. So, so Will, what? Uh, you move it to the left. What have you got, Will? Anything else? <laughs> no, it looks like you're still recording. Oh, yeah, um, oh, I was just sharing my screen, but yeah, I can stop. I, hey, uh, so I'm gonna stop recording because we're gonna talk about you specifically that's watching this right now because we don't like you. So I'm gonna turn this off. Thanks, the team, for coming. I'm gonna have this up on YouTube. I'm also gonna post it in the Loxo Users Group. Uh, so see you next Friday for our normal roundtable where you can come and yell at anybody you want. Have a great weekend. And let me turn off the screen because I'm an idiot. Man, is streaming. Stop streaming. Stop streaming. <laughs>